Number 19, classify the following as an acid-base reaction or an oxidation reduction reaction. And then we have letter E out of the bunch. So we need to know if this equation, K3P plus 2O2s yield K3PO4, is a oxidation reduction or an acid base. Okay, there's one main difference uh, between acid base reactions and oxidation reduction reactions. If something is an oxidation reduction reaction, that means that the oxidation states, I'm just going to put ox states, but the oxidation states of the elements will change from your, uh, from your reactants to your products. And remember, the oxidation states are just the charges. So if you see a change in charge from the left side to the right side, it's automatically an oxidation state, an oxidation re uh, reduction reaction. On the flip side, acid-base reactions, since they're just double displacement, they're fancy double displacement reactions, the oxidation state or those charges uh, don't change. So that's the main difference here. Oxidation reduction, they have to change. Acid-base reactions, they do not change. So the thing is, is that we need to find out what the uh, charges are for each individual element and see if it changes from reactant to product. So let's just always work from left to right. Let's start off with the first one. I'll put it over here. We have K3P. Now, take note that I could care less if this is a solid. That has nothing to do with finding the charges, okay? The states have nothing to do with finding oxidation states, nor do how many you have, the big guys, the coefficients. So you can kind of like get rid of all this, you know, junk, okay? And this as well. You're only just focusing on the individual compounds or the molecules. So we've done tons of problems like this, right? To find the oxidation states, we use the subscripts. There was three potassium and one phosphorus. Use those um, subscripts to crisscross to find out the charges. This three crisscross up told me that phosphorus was a negative three. And I put a negative because negatives are in the back, right? This is just, uh, you know, standard. And the positives are in the front. So when I crisscross this one up, the potassium would be a plus one. So in order to make K3P, a potassium had to have had a plus one charge. It lost one electron and the phosphorus was a negative three. Now we just double check on our nice little trend here just to make sure that we got our charges correct. But it looks good here, right? Potassium is in group one. That generally says that I need a plus one, and that's what we have. And phosphorus is right below nitrogen, and it's in the negative three category. So our charges are correct. I'm just going to write them on the top here. So K was a plus one, and the phosphorus was a negative three. And this just means that each potassium, there was three of them, each of them lost one electron. Now let's go to the next one. O2, what was the charge of the oxygen in O2? Now, this is a diatomic. Remember, in chemistry, di means two, right? And atomic atoms, there are two atoms of the same element existing together. If you have a diatomic, and there's only a couple of them, there's no charge in the upper right-hand corner, right? That means that this diatomic has to be neutral. And what's the only um, number that is not positive nor negative? It's zero. And maybe I'll just put a slash through here, just signifying that it's a zero and not an oxygen. So the charge here would be a zero for oxygen. Diatomics always have a zero charge for that element. So the oxygen here is a zero. Now let's find out what the charges are for K3PO4. And I write this a little bit over here because we're going to need a little bit of work here. Mainly because 
there are three elements here. So if there are three elements, you're going to know two of the elements charges and you need to find out the other one. And the rule of thumb, there, it's a trick. Generally, you will know the outside guys, right, from both ends, but you won't know the middle one. You usually always have to find the middle one out. So, I know that potassium, um, phosphorus, right, P, and oxygen all have to come together, so they have to add together, to equal a total charge. But now, what was the total charge? The total charge is always in the upper right-hand corner, right? Just like we saw in the O2. But was there a charge in the upper right-hand corner here? No. So what's the overall charge of the compound? It was a zero. So this has to be a zero, right? I'll put a slash here because we have oxygen here. But now we need two things that we have to know when we are doing this type of math. We need to know how many we have of each individual element, and we need to know the oxidation state. So I'm just going to say how many, and then we'll say the ox state. How many um, potassiums do we have in K3PO4? Well, we have three of them. How many phosphorus do we have? We just have one, right? And how many oxygen do we have? We have four, right? Now here comes the tricky part. What's the oxidation state for potassium here? Well, potassium was in group one. It's a plus one charge. I knew that one. Then I know the other end as well. Oxygen, it's right here, right? Oxygen would want to be a negative two. We don't know what the phosphorus is, so I'm going to label this as X. But I know that this all has to equal zero. Now, this is all being added together, but what do you have to do with these two numbers? You have to multiply them. So I will multiply three times a plus one, and that's a three. One times X is just X. And then 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. So this technically is a negative 8. So 3 plus x minus 8 equals 0. Let's just clean this up. 3, right, the 3 minus 8, that's a negative 5. And then maybe I'll just clean that up. And then x plus 5, right, we plus 5 on both sides, right? If it's x minus 5, we do x plus 5. So x equals a plus 5. And that's the oxidation state for the phosphorus. So just like we said here, the potassium was a plus 1. That was the trend. The oxygen was a minus 2. That was the trend. And we had to solve for the potassium. And the potassium in this case was a plus 5. Do you see how the potassium didn't match up with this trend? That's why we generally have to find the ones in the middle, if it's three elements or more, because the middle guys won't follow the trend. But now we just have to see if the oxidation states changed. So let's see. Potassium was a plus 1 on the reactant side, and it still was a plus 1. So for potassium, there was no change. So maybe I'll write that down. So for potassium, there was no change. However, phosphorus was a negative 3, and it went to a plus 5. The oxidation state changed. And the same thing for the oxygen. The oxygen started off as a 0, and it went to a negative 2. Since these changed and your oxidation states changed you have an oxidation reduction reaction and that's it so since we found out that uh this the cha uh, the charges changed from one side to the other it's automatically an oxidation reduction reaction and that's it guys
So no acid base here because we saw a change in those charges. If there was no change, it would be an acid base. Okay? So that's it. Guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. I hope it did. And I hope you guys are doing well and that you're studying hard. Good luck on your tests coming up. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye.